from my point of view, this is the first task of interpretation. And I cannot say that an in interpretation is complete if it uh, doesn't treat uh, this question of uh, integrating the, the gravitation. And this is the same for Lorentz invariance, because uh, I am uh, convinced that uh, Lorentz invariance is uh, really uh, important properties of physics, including microphysics. And uh, if uh, this is not the case, if you insist to defend an interpretation which is not Lorentz invariance, I think you have to give strong arguments for that. And of course, Lorentz <coughs> invariance is linked to gravitation, because if you believe that the right theory for gravitation is general relativity, you have to have a local uh, Lorentz invariance, and more than that, you have to have a covariance and I will speak about covariance at the end of my talk. So I, I, won't, I won't comment about more implications. Uh, some highlights uh, in my talk that, uh, as you will see, and it is explained in many papers, quantum physics, as it is, uh, doesn't obey covariance and, for instance, the equivalence principle, but it should be possible to adapt this uh, question of covariance and to equivalence principle to the quantum, and there are uh, concrete propositions like by uh, Lucien Hardy. Um, the question is, uh, is there are some interpretations where there are both classical and quantum variables. Variables are some uh, uh, appellation for what is more or less the element of reality. And so the question is, is gravity generated by quantum or by classical variables? MWE is a multi-word interpretation, f what like interpretations, and DBB is for uh, De Bruyne, uh, Bohm uh, interpretations, and more generally, uh, hidden variable interpretations. The question also uh, about the measurement problem is that uh, it, uh, it is possible that uh, the inclusion of gravity helps to resolve the measurement problems, and we have some concrete proposition by Penrose or the Montevideo, Montevideo interpretation. And uh, maybe it is possible also that uh, no interpretation really can hold without inclusion of gravity, and uh, this was uh, mentioned in this morning. Uh, Mirror's talk. Uh, it is also possible there are arguments that the source of gravity is not energy or the quantum expectation of uh, the energy momentum tensor, but some other quantity. And I will comment uh, on that. Uh, also, I think, and this is linked to the requirement that quantum physics should be Lorentz invariance. Uh, I think. Uh, the link between quantum mechanics, speaking about uh, quantum particles, and quantum field theory, uh, speaking about fields, uh, I'm not sure it is completely clear. And for instance, uh, what is a particle in quantum field theory? What is exactly the vacuum in quantum field theory? Uh, I'm not sure this is uh, very clear. And for instance, uh, if some uh, state of the field can be interpreted as a particle, uh, it is not clear if uh, this uh, interpretation may be preserved in curved space time or uh, in the case of accelerating uh, system. <coughs> and uh, I will maybe mention some of those experiments allowing to take test this ideas. So first, uh, non-locality and uh, entanglement. The word non-locality uh, is very special because this is a non-locality, which is, this is quantum non-locality, which is not in contradiction with uh, special relativity, uh, which doesn't mean that uh, you have a Lorentz invariant in quantum uh, in quantum mechanics. The first question is how to reconcile the local character of gravity with the non-local character of uh, of quantum physics and especially entanglement. And uh, there is a remark by Hardy that uh, 
even in general relativity, the behaviors which are, uh, in some sense, the, the real degrees of freedom of gravity are usually non-local. And another remark by Rovelli, which is that uh, uh, you know that Rovelli claims for a relational interpretation both in uh, general relativity and in quantum physics. And so uh, maybe this is a good starting point to uh, reconcile the two theories. And so, uh, well, I don't want to discuss uh, all these uh, proposals. And uh, when you have a system which is delocalized, which is the case, always the case in quantum physics, uh, how uh, does it gravitate? And for instance, if you take a simple quantum particle in quantum mechanics, it has a wave function which extends maybe uh, uh, on the whole universe. And so in this case, where points the gravitational fields if you are in Newtonian physics? <coughs> or what is the curvature of space-time where it is localized if you are in a, a general relativity? And this, of course, uh, especially crucial when you have a specially superposed state and as you will see this will be at the basis of some uh, proposed experiments and of course you have the question of temporal effects predicted by general relativity which uh, cannot be neglected in any case and which have important implications so the second question is what gravitates in quantum physics uh, and what is the origin of the gravitational fields and it is often uh, claimed that this is energy of, or energy density or maybe the quantum expectation value of uh, the energy, so energy momentum tensor uh, operator uh, I'm not sure this is uh, the case and there are papers as you will see which claim that it is not the case and so this raises the question of what means energy because even in uh, classical physics when we speak about energy in general we are speaking about energy differences and the question of defining the absolute energy of the state in quantum physics is not uh, really, really clear and also uh, I think there is no real uh, theoretical motivation to claim that the source of gravitation is energy or the uh, in classical or the energy momentum tensor. This works in uh, classical physics, but I see uh, no strong argument claiming that uh, this is energy which is a source of gravitation in quantum physics, and I will present some arguments on that. Uh, if, if we want to naively insert uh, the quantum energy into general relativity, for instance, we have to define a quantum energy momentum tensor. And we know that in quantum physics, the, uh, like any quantity, the, this tensor is an operator. So how to get a scalar quantity from the tensor? Uh, you can take the expectation value, but we know that this gives uh, infinite results. So uh, the question remains open. And I will uh, rapidly present two negative answers to these questions. The question is, uh, is energy, which is at the origin um, of gravitation, by Bruschi and uh, John Bess. Uh, before, I want to speak about uh, vacuum uh, fluctuations. And uh, speak also about entanglement because we can ask the question uh, does entanglement uh, as a gravitational influence uh, contribute to the creation of the gravitational field? Uh, this is an interesting uh, question I, which presently I ask no answer. Uh, concretely, if you have two particles, uh, is their gravitational effect different according to the fact that they are or they are not entangled? And I think this is very important. And uh, you know that entanglement is measured by entropy. We have many kinds of entropy. 
So entropy is, is entanglement uh, in some sense. And uh, entropy is well defined for a quantum state. Uh, adult, uh, energy is uh, in general not uh, very well uh, defined. So what gravitates? And uh, first a proposition by Bushi. Uh, only energy that can be extracted from a system and converted into work contributes to the gravitational field. Ergotropy. Uh, this is a very reasonable uh, proposition. And uh, it, uh, it has been checked by him that uh, applied to the classical case, this uh, gives the usual physics, the usual gravitation. But uh, if you apply that to the quantum uh, states, this is completely different because uh, what gravitates is not the expectation value of the uh, momentum energy tensor, but the difference between its expectation value in the state where you are and its expectation value in some reference state, which usually could be taken uh, as a vacuum, so this would mean that uh, vacuum energy do not gravitate, and of course this has strong implication in uh, cosmology. So as I told, all classical results are recoverable. The, the divergence problem uh, disappears, and uh, there are no vacuum energy. And uh, well, this is very interesting, this notion of passive states, but I will rather concentrate on, on the applications. And uh, it is interesting that John Bez made uh, something quite similar. And uh, he, he remarked that uh, the entropy, the, 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 the usual definition of entropy for quantum states is not really the quantum analog of entropy, I mean from the thermodynamical point of view, and it defines a quantity defined uh, called quantropy. And uh, in classical physics, what one can call a useful energy is in fact what is called uh, free energy, which is the usual energy minus the entropy uh, times the temperature. And the temperature here, uh, when you minimize the Lagrangian, play the role of the Lagrangian multiplier. And uh, because minimizing the free energy is equivalent to my maximize this quantity, which is uh, the entropy with the Lagrangian multiplier. Beta is 1 over the temperature what is called the coolness. <coughs> and uh, he, uh, John Bayes defines a quantum analog of the free energy that he called the free action, which is linked to the logarithm of what is called the partition function. I want to go uh, into the details. But this is some, a proposition which is uh, similar uh, with that of uh, Bushi. And uh, I mention that because uh, one implication of that is that uh, the vacuum energy do not gravitate with uh, implication for cosmology because you know that the, the idea of inflation, dark energy, time travel and others are based on the idea that uh, quantum fields exerce, exert a very specific gravitational interaction which is similar to that of the cosmological constant with some difference. So uh, there are many, many uh, discussions about the reality of the vacuum fluctuations mm -hmm. and uh, their possible gravitational uh, influence. I don't want to go into the details. There are no decisive arguments to claim that they, they gravitate or that they don't gravitate. And there are some claimed effects uh, for the influence of the vacuum fluctuations, like the Casimir effect, but their attribution to uh, vacuum fluctuations are controversial. And anyway, uh, I, as I it across from the other uh, publications, this depends on the interpretation. So turning to the cosmological constant uh, problem, uh, which is a very bad uh, 
affiliation because uh, the real problem is what accelerates the cosmic expansion and the cosmological constant is uh, possible answer. I would say this is the gravitational answer, the true cosmological constant as it has been introduced by Einstein in 1917. And uh, I should precise that the true cosmological constant, the gravitational one, is perfectly okay with all the data uh, presently about the cosmic expansion acceleration and its variation and its constancy and so on. <coughs> but some people reject it for uh, reasons that I won't, uh, won't comment here. And so they, they require the presence of some dark energy and uh, dark energy is not predicted by quantum physics, I have mentioned this morning, because uh, quantum physics predicts infinite energy, and the high value which we have mentioned this morning, 10 to the power 100 or more, are in fact resulting from some ad hoc uh, modification of quantum field theory, which are simply modification of the integrals giving energy expectation uh, by adding some cutoff, which is uh, uh, introduced by hand in a very ad hoc manner. And when you obtain the 10 power 120, this uh, result from uh, choosing the cutoff uh, equal to the Planck constant, and uh, some people try to make a cutoff. Uh, of the order of the, of the symmetry breaking of the weak or, or the weak strong interactions, but uh, this doesn't work. So uh, for the moment, we have no theory which predicts some dark energy, except the proposition that I just mentioned, we said uh, simply that the vacuum energy is zero, and that uh, the energy of a quantum state uh, is more or less exactly the energy of the particle uh, which are present in uh, this state. Uh, so this question of uh, the possible gravitational effect of the vacuum fluctuations depend on uh, the interpretation and uh, there is a classification of the interpretation into psi incomplete, psi complete and uh, psi, uh, uh, I, uh, sorry, I, I, uh, I don't remember exactly. Uh, so, sorry, this is here, you should read psi complete context, which means that the only reality <coughs> is quantum, the only variables in the theory are the quantum, like uh, for instance in, uh, Yes, complete vacuum fluctuations don't predict that. So, uh, oh, oh, I have a mismatch here. Yes. So, in a psi complete model, this means that you have only uh, quantum reality. So, this is the quantum variables which are including possibly a vacuum fluctuation. And in a psi incomplete model, like for instance uh, the Bray theory, uh, you can have uh, classical variables which gravitate. And so uh, it is possible to take the low value of the cosmological constant if you, if you think that it is low, because from the gravitational point of view it is not low or high, it has no problem of this kind, but if you uh, want to compare that to the prediction of the vacuum, this means that the low value is an argument for the psi incomplete models. And in some models you have uh, uh, something which is more complicated, which uh, allow, for instance, that the quantum fluctuations may or should gravitate in the early universe, 
and for instance, this could be a justification for cosmic inflation, <coughs> but not in the current universe, so uh, they cannot invoke to explain the dark energy and solve the so-called cosmological constant problem. Uh, I should maybe say one word about the multiverse, but I, I will only say one thing, which is that the multiverse predicted by the Everett or Everett-like theory is not the same thing that the multiverse which are uh, invoked in cosmology and uh, that with addition of the entropy arguments uh, may uh, pretend to solve the cosmological constant or the homogeneity problem or something like that. So this is not the same thing and they should not be confused. Uh, an important question is the cohesion <laughs> of uh, gravitational state because uh, what is a particle uh, from the point of view of quantum, of quantum field theory is it is some uh, superposition of uh, states of the quantum fields and it happens that uh, when you have acceleration of the system or when you have gravitation, the, like, the cohesion of this uh, wave packet in some sense is not preserved. But there is more important, I will, uh, I will not speak about Penrose because we have uh, this, morning, this morning talk. Uh, something which is interesting is the Montevideo interpretation and uh, it happens that uh, uh, <coughs> from the uncertainty principle, you have some fundamental limitation to the precision of clocks. <coughs> and uh, the evolution, uh, if, if you assume that you have uh, no uh, physical, re physically really measurement, the evolution remains unitary, but it remains unitary with respect to the proper time. And the basis of this interpretation is that the proper time is different from the clock time because the clock time has fundamental uncertainties. And the resulting thing is that the in terms of the clock time t, and the clock time is what you are able to read, the interpretation doesn't appear unitary. Uh, even if it is really unitary with respect to the proper time. So this is really an effect of uh, that we can call temporal decoherence, which is due to the fact that you have some effects of time dilatations, which can be kinematic due to the motion or to the gravitational. This is the Einstein effect. And this is part of the fact that uh, of the temporal effects like uh, quantum time dilations. You have also the influence of the gravitational redshift, which is similar, and which uh, uh, has, for consequence, this one, one mixer that I mentioned, which means that uh, a packet of uh, field state which reproduce a quantum particle uh, doesn't maintain its cohesion when it is accelerating or in a gravitational field. And you have more, no, I, I don't have the slides here, but what I wanted to mention is that uh, quantum physics doesn't obey the weak equivalence principle and not only it doesn't obey the weak equivalence principle, but it is even impossible to formulate correctly this equivalence uh, principle, which is, as you know, fundamental in, uh, in the general theory of uh, relativity. So it is interesting that uh, they were propositioned by uh, Lucien Hardy <coughs> to uh, to define some context allowing to generalize some notion of uh, general relativity to apply them to quantum physics. I mean, uh, his 
proposed to replace the notion of manifold by quantum manifold, state by extended state, covariance by quantum covariance, and equivalence principle by a quantum equivalence principle. He is proposing a perfectly uh, applicable uh, prescription for a quantum equivalence principle. Uh, I stop here. I will, I will not mention the tabletop experiments. Uh, just show you the uh, principle of uh, some of these uh, experiments. This is from the book of uh, Rovelli. Uh, the idea is to have two particles. Each particle is in a, in a specially superposed state. So this is the two branches of the superposition for the particle one, and the two branches of the superposition for the particle two. <coughs> The system is arranged so that these two branches are closed and have the possibility to interact gravitationally. So uh, the question is, <coughs> will this gravitational interaction entangle or not the two particles? And if yes, this means that the uh, gravitational fields should be in a superposition. So this would be an argument for quantum gravity, and this would be an argument for the interpretation which allow uh, quantum gravity. Uh, for instance, uh, multi-universe, and in fact, multi-universe uh, do not only allow for quantum gravity, but in some sense, they require it. And if, they, if at the end you have no implication, and you can check that with uh, interferometer, then this would be uh, this would mean that uh, gravity, you have no superposition of space-time, so no quantum gravity, and so this would be an argument against the interpretations with which predict uh, quantum gravity. So I stop here, and uh, so you see that the conclusion is that uh, uh, gravitation really has to be introduced in quantum physics, and in any case. It has some important effect because uh, you, you may believe that uh, uh, gravity is quantum or not, but you should have uh, the time delay, the time shift effects which act on uh, the quantum states and uh, whatever is your preferred interpretations, you, you, you should be able to precise in the frame of that interpretation what is the consequence of uh, this effect of the curvature of space-time which is always present. And also, I want to repeat some uh, proposition which was made uh, this morning also, that maybe it is impossible to solve the problem of uh, quantum physics and to have a current interpretation uh, without introducing the, the gravitation. This is spectacular in the proposition by Penrose and uh, Montevideo interpretations, but uh, uh, it is possible that no other interpretation can be retained if it doesn't include gravitation. Thank you.